Okay, now we'll cut the groove. I'll set that up. Okay, so I ended up putting a high-speed steel uh, internal boring tool. It's a small one to kind of get in between there. You know, then uh, put it here, zeroed out. That way you know the depth of it. And then right now I'm at 43 for 0.43 for my distance out so I'll come a little more and then I have it on slower speed so this is running at 320 That's how I did the, all of it, just kind of feed it and slow, take a little bit at a time. Now I'll put the CBN cutter back on and uh, finish going down in the depth of the hole. So this part of it will clear a little more.
bench. Be good. I'll take you off and zoom in. Oh, here's zoomed in. So you can tell it's a pretty smooth cut. It's, you know, and then right there's part of the cast. So once you get past that little groove, it, you, you still want to keep it all the same because uh, the spray runs, you know, deep. That's why you're cutting this groove. So there it is. And that's all they they had machined on the the one drum. Uh, one one more thing I forgot to to do. So you want to put a little chamfer on the top of this just to clean it up. Otherwise, it has a pretty sharp thing, and you can cut yourself. And uh, it helps the spray go on a little easier. Again, stay at the 540. Uh, that's also why I have my cross feed set up on an angle. Now I did remove it out of the chuck and put it in, but that chamfer isn't super critical or anything. So don't forget to do that. Because it won't, you can't file it or anything because it's hardened. So you gotta make sure you use your, your cutter. Okay, here's what I'm doing for a, a lube on the Turbo 350 36 element Sprague. I have a, carbide end mill it is three sixteenths um i'm just drilling it in line with the lube circuit for feeding the piston um i only have one in it um, comparing it off a, a 4L80 or a Turbo 400, they have basically the same size on each side. So I'm going to try this. Just do one side. And it'll pretty much get lubrication um, when it's free spinning. When this clutch is engaged, this should be free spinning. And then when it's not getting lubrication, it's engaged and shouldn't really need it that's my theory but uh i have it set up in my end mill or my milling machine uh and I, I have it so it's pretty much lined up i think i'm off just a little bit but i don't think it matters i'm just trying to get it so it falls into that socket so it's less distance i have to drill um and I left this just a little bit oversized, so then I can go back and uh, use some emery cloth on it and get it smooth, and then that basically gets rid of the burr. So, and uh, I had to make this extension so I could clear it. All I did is use a piece of half inch rod, um, drilled the hole a little bit undersized for the, the shaft of this, and then uh, ground a flat spot on the end mill too. And then just ran it up there. And then when I'm feeding it, I'm just letting the end, end mill do the cutter. I'm not really putting a whole lot of downward pressure on it. And I'm running it at 1600 RPM. I'm spraying WD-40 on it. Uh, I cleared the hardened surface already, but this is basically what I'm doing. Should be through. 
I was all I was doing is letting the end mill do the cutting. show you just what I'm doing for sanding. All right, here we're set up over at the lathe. I'm running it at 1500 RPM. Uh, this is what I'm doing for uh, cleaning the, the deburring the hole and then just kind of cleaning this up a little bit. I got a WD-40, uh, 180 grit. If I had finer, I, I'd use finer, but uh, this left a fine finish. It, it wasn't too bad. And then I'll hit it up with some, uh, um, like, SOS pad stuff. And then WD-40 on it. And then if you want, you can also hit up in here. And that'll smooth out all those uh, areas where the, the seals were running on the inside and just smooth it out. Kind of clean it up. And here's the hole. There it is. I'm gonna clean the inside up nice and so a little bit, but it's it's smooth now. So there it is. All right, thank you. Okay, what I got here is a a magnifier, digital magnifier. Look at the surface on here. Okay, this is the one I machined. It's not too bad, it looks pretty smooth. This is the Turbo 350. And then here is a 4L80. I'd have to say that's pretty darn close. Feel exactly the same. Both smooth. So, with the camera, it goes on a stand, but you can take it off and then focus it up just by uh, turning the little knob. Zooming in on the table. But 
I use that to kind of look at finishes on threading and make matching up threads and stuff. But uh, man, those are both pretty uh, pretty close. So that's uh, that's what I see with that. Okay, YouTube. So I went to the local technical college I went to for machining and we tested the hardness and the smoothness of the races. So um, here's a 4L80 uh, direct drum. So basically we're doing the same thing, you know. Uh, I wanted to check the, the hardness of the race and the smoothness of the race compared to the ones I machined. I even machined a um, Turbo 400 one. And then uh, I got the Turbo 350. So when we went there, or when I went there, um, the hardness of it was at uh, 60, 60 HRC. And then the hardness of the um, race on the Turbo 400 after machining the ski jumps off it just like I did the Turbo 350, but to a different size. Um, it was at HRC 55. So it's basically the same hardness. And same with the Turbo 350 one. Same hardness. It's at HRC 55. So the hardness is identical. And then as far as smoothness, uh, they all came out to about point, or, uh, at six, um, six RA. So, and you can, and that was with 180 grit that I was finishing up, um, to kind of clean, clean the races. And that's exactly what the, the stock race on the turbo or on the 4L80 E was. So, um, machining those down, there's no worries. And then the only different thing I did on the Turbo 350 is I did put the one lube hole in it where on that, uh, the one I got from that company, they didn't have any lube hole in it. So I'm going to go back, pull it out and redrill a uh, lube hole for it. And, uh, so once you do that, it, it should be pretty much perfect. I mean, it's, same hardness, same smoothness. Um, and as far as the size, the size of it, uh, if you can go a little above three and a half and then do the sanding to it and then double check it and get it right on three and a half, I think you, you'll be golden. Um, I'm sure you could go, you know, a couple thousandths minus, um, and still be fine, but uh, I used 180 grit emery cloth and it cleaned up perfectly. If you went to 400 grit or 600 grit, it'd probably even be better. Um, and that would be better than the stock 4L81. So just wanted to let you know on my findings there. Um, have any uh, comments, questions? Uh, let me know in the comments. Um, like and subscribe. Thank you.